Welcome to episode 5 of Gaming TI. We have some interesting topics again today. Uh, and this week is Black Friday. We're finally coming up to Black Friday. That last week of November. So there are definitely some awesome deals out there. Uh, so Tristan, what you got for us? Uh, well, there's been a hell of a lot of deals on Steam. Steam has their autumn sale going on right now. They've got... Well, the autumn sale began on November 26th and it's run until December 3rd. You've got games on... you got games like uh, Rainbow Six Siege, that's $7 right now. Well, $7.99. Mm. Uh, you've got uh, like uh, all the franchise games, like almost like... Not all franchise games, but a lot of good franchise games like Tom Clancy's, Rainbow Six Siege, Ghost Recon, uh, like Wolfenstein, Fallout, Assassin's Creed, Doom, like a lot of games on sale. Great prices nice. on everything. Uh, there's also the Epic Game Store that has a lot of new games on sale as well. Uh, I believe Borderlands is on sale, the new one, Borderlands 3. Uh, you can get ten dollars off of that right now. So, if you're if you're looking for a new PC game, or if if you just if you if there's an older game that you always wanted to try, now is definitely the time to get that game. Nice. How much uh, how much is Borderlands selling it? Because uh, and like that's literally newest Borderlands and everything that's coming with it, right? I think it was ten dollars off. So I think it's like thirty five dollars. Ooh, okay. Yeah, it's not bad, not bad, especially since that game came out what like two months ago now. Yeah, I could check that. Uh, I could check that. Pull that up. Uh, a lot of my it. friends who are playing it, uh, they like it. I just have not pulled the trigger on it. I, I don't know the the graphics for Borderlands has always been kind of weird to me. So uh, it is a it's a good looking game though in its own way. It's like because it's not an easy game to run. It looks like it might be an easy game to run, but it's it's really not. I right. think like a, a like a twenty seventy if you max out all the settings gets like like a hundred FPS. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. So it's definitely not an easy game to run. Okay. Yeah. And, Got anything uh, else for the people, or is that it for now? Uh, wow! It's even better than I thought. It's. It's thirty dollars and fourteen cents. Red Dead oh, Redemption snap. Two, just come to just came to PC, thirty five ninety nine. Outer Worlds, very new game as well, thirty three seventy four. A lot of good games on sale. Steam's killing it. Well, that's 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 on the Epic Games so. Oh, that's Epic. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Epic killing it. Yeah. That Fortnite money helping them out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, there's also some interesting console sales going on, uh, games and also consoles themselves being on sale. Uh, one thing I will say, Walmart and Best Buy right now, they are they're the two that are killing it with some of the sales out there. Um, right now, Walmart has the Xbox One S, one terabyte Star Wars, you know, Jedi Fallen uh, Order. That's brand new. 200 bucks for the console and the game bundled together. They also have the all digital um, Xbox One S console uh, selling for 199 but I believe that uh, Best Buy has it for 150 if it hasn't sold out already because, you know, that thing's been flying off shelves. Um, if you want to pick up a Nintendo Switch, now's the time. Nintendo never puts their stuff on sale. So, of course, the Switch is not on sale but you do get mario kart 8 with it now so uh, for the same price of 300 bucks so that's you know an easy 60 dollars coming in right there uh the sony playstation 4 everybody knows uh but this is the uh this is not the pro this is just um the slim also comes with uh last of us god of war and horizon zero dawn for 199 on walmart but unfortunately that one's already sold out but Ooh, fear not, uh, Best Buy also has it in stock. But got to move quick. That might be out soon, too. Um, there's also some gaming headsets and so on that are on sale. Um, got the Logitech G933 Artemis uh, Spectrum Wireless. That's on Newegg, actually. Uh, it's $120 off. That's 60% off, selling at 80 bucks. 
So if you want to pick up a gaming headset, yeah, now's the time. Um, we also have some a surprising amount of sales from uh, Apple, actually, with uh, headsets. So uh, go check out, uh, again, Best Buy. Best Buy is the place where they have a lot of sales. I don't know what Best Buy is doing, but Best Buy has got some good stuff going on right now. So Best Buy, Walmart, and I saw a few sales at Target as well. Check those three guys out. Um, you know that the big boys like uh, Amazon will be stepping in with some more aggressive deals, probably on Friday itself. And it's one of those things where you really have to kind of wonder, you know, should I buy it Friday or should I wait till Cyber Monday? But don't wait too long because, you know, you might uh, you might shoot yourself in the foot right there. Yeah, yeah. But uh, that's that's about uh, all that I have right now. It's mostly console sales. There's a lot of uh, console games that are also on sale um, on PlayStation Plus, actually. Uh, PlayStation is having a pretty decent sale for um, a lot of games. Some games new, some games not so new. But PlayStation Plus has a lot, a lot more than I could actually go through right now. Borderlands is one of them, though. So check it out. Go get yourself some games. Christmas is coming up. Treat yourself. It's interesting that uh, the PS4 sold out. I don't think... Uh, like, I saw a lot of PS4 deals, but I didn't think it would sell. Because oh, yeah, I mean... It's a weird time to buy a PS4. Yeah, the, I mean, it's a weird time to buy any console, kind of, because we do have uh, both the new Xbox and the new PlayStation coming out next year. But at the same time, I feel like I'd argue that it's a pretty... It's a it's a good time. The only reason I say that is because right now you're getting it for a pretty low price. And at the same time, you also don't want to be the first person out the gate to buy a console. Because consoles are notorious for the first, about, I'd say for the first year, uh, working out some little kinks and so on. And they're also ridiculously expensive. Um Although, honestly, with, with, with the climate being, you know, like uh, Amazon and so on, that's changing. Because I remember when the PS, PS3 first came out, the weekend after, it was selling on eBay for like $600, $800, $1,000. You know, way more than its, its uh, MSRP value. You but can, You can get a flip on a... You can get a decent flip on a PS4 when the PS5 comes out. That's what you're trying to say? Uh, I'm trying to say that... Um, you can, chances are, PS4 is still going to be mainstream and it's still going to be supported with a lot of the new games that Sony will uh, be releasing, whether it be exclusive or not, on uh, on the PlayStation 4. So, like, PlayStation 4 is still going to be supported for at least maybe a year um, after the PlayStation 5 comes out. That's that's how, that's what the trends seem to show. Yeah, true. So, I mean, obviously they're going to support it a, a bit longer than that, but it's going to be, like, mainstreamed you know, like you're going to start seeing games on both platform PS5 and PS4 while people are catching up and picking up more PS5s and then they're working out all of the the kinks and so on. Uh, it's also a weird time to buy consoles simply because those streaming services are kind of coming at them, you know. I mean, there was, True. there was Stadia and then I see Steam dropped uh, Remote Play, uh, which basically allows allows you to share your games with uh with friends and you could play like couch co op or like multiplayer games and only one right. person needs to have the game. Now one thing I do because PlayStation did have a service just like that, um, SharePlay. They still do have it. Um, works all right. I wouldn't say it works the best, but um, one thing that I do kind of wonder. I I didn't get to read too much into it. Um, but I wonder is it a case of does your friend have to be online at the time while they're sharing, or are you literally kind of like sharing, just sharing the account in a sense where they don't have to be online while you're playing a game that they shared with you? No, I think you have to be online because oh, okay. uh, I'm reading it here. You have to, uh, how it works, you launch the game, then you have to add, invite your friend to play uh, and then you play together. So the I remember when Sony first demoed SharePlay, uh, they demoed it as a, hey, I'm stuck on this really hard level. Hey, my friend beat this game already. Let me uh, let me, let me pass the sticks to him. <laughs> Except he's not here. So I'll definitely, 
I'm definitely interested to see uh, what games will be picking this up, but who knows? I mean, it's definitely going to, it's a welcome feature for sure. Uh, it definitely adds much more versatility. So I'm interested in it. Yeah, I like to see like new games, like maybe like a triple A title that have that adds split screen. Remember the good old days of split screen? The good old days, man. So like, you know, you could have some couch co-op games. Well, like they would be like the 2019 or 2020 version of couch Mm -hmm. co-op. I like that. You know what? Um, you know what I also remember from. From a while ago, Sony released this, the Sony, uh, the TV, the, so- the the PlayStation TV, I think. And it was one of those cases where it didn't, it supported something else other than uh, split screen. It supported, like, you would put on the glasses and you guys would be looking at the same screen, but you'd be seeing two different views. Um, which I think, that, that was insane. Like, back in the days, when I think about it, that, that was ahead of its time. That was way ahead of its time. So you put on these glasses, and I don't know how they did it, but apparently the pixels were arranged in a way where one pair of glasses would see one set of pic- pixels, not pickles, um, <laughs> the other set of glasses would see another pl- pair of pixels, and you could essentially, you know, be playing the same game and not being, like, able to cheat because you're only seeing you know your, your point of view your yeah. view so i don't i don't really know what I, I i remember i wanted one when it first came out but i don't know i really don't know whatever happened to it i've literally never heard of that oh wow <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, now you see now now you question now you're making me question my memory it's like are you sure you didn't I, dream that yeah <laughs> I, I like i still remember the shape of the 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 <laughs> Oh man, now now you're really making me uh question it, man. Yeah, Google. <laughs> you Google <that. laughs> yeah, yeah. Um yes, yes, it is. It is Sony PlayStation uh 3D display lets two players see different images on the same screen. Booyah, you know my memory don't hasn't failed me just yet. This came out in 2011, man. 2011. Yeah, they they were they were ahead of the game with it. They were really ahead of the game with it. I've never seen this. The tree is a, the three D. It's a twenty four inch three D monitor. Yeah. Oh. So it was used in conjunction with uh something called active shutter LCD glasses, and uh, yeah, it uh. Well, that looks interesting. Like, yeah, much, I think it's definitely was... something. How, how much, much was it? That? Yeah. Five hundred bucks U.S. Oh, that is tough. That is. <laughs> Very tough. That's, that's that's buying another console. That's a tough sell for a really niche product here. <laughs> I mean, it's but then again, again, like the same thing, right? It was in its infancy at the time. I really thought it was going to get better, and it was just going to be uh, iterated on more and more, and it, the price would have dropped as it did. But I honestly think it's just a case of. And by the way, this was for the PS3, not even the PS4. Um, but I think I really think it was one of those cases of um, split screen games just started to die out, you know? Yeah, true. Like I don't even know what games are split screen anymore. Like, yeah, I mean, and the uh, thing is, you realize most of the games that we play now, especially games that we play online with other people that are a bit more competitive. Like, like what competitive games do you play right now? Uh, right now I play Overwatch, basically. Maybe a little Apex. Same, same. I mean, we often do play those games uh, together a lot. Yeah. Um, what else do I play that I would say? I tried to get into Rainbow Six. I I think I just got into the game way too late because I get absolutely dookied on <laughs> every time I join a game. Yeah, that game has a steep, steep learning curve. Super steep. So, do you... Uh, do you think that you're you're better than the players at your level? Like, what uh, what rank are you in Overwatch right now? Uh, well, I would say I would consider myself a, a plat player. I'm part of the proud uh, plat chat. <laughs> we represent. We out here. Hashtag plat chat. Hashtag plat chat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I would I would like to think that I'm uh, one of the uh, the more esteemed members of plat chat. You know. Mm. You know, I could be mm. Diamond. I might be Diamond, you know? So, so uh, <laughs> I have one question for you. Why aren't you Diamond? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Why are you attacking me? <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, you know, it's it's the question, right? You know, like, because I feel like a lot of the times we get, obviously, we watch the pros, we watch the Asus, the Mendos, um, the actual pro players out there. Even Ninja is a pro player to an extent, um, just retired now. But a lot of people often get tilted, you know, thinking that they're, I'm the hot stuff on the team. When in reality, we might just be average. Okay, so check this, right? The reality is, I am the hot stuff on the team. <laughs> All right, but all uh, the confidence, exactly. But you see, what happens is, is um, you know, and then you know, no, lag. I don't know. Please, please, you please know, tell me. You know, <laughs> lag happens, and like uh, you know, ping because I'm really far, and you know, stuff. Mm. Like <laughs> you know, it's interesting though because uh. I do uh, recall that uh, someone like Mendo often plays with like a little, a little over a hundred ping on like European servers and so on. You know, mm, mm, mm. Is, this is a a great time for you to recall that. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, he also <laughs> plays with other pros in like Japan, and you know they, they got high ping, and and they're in. In predator lobbies in Apex, you know, just just saying. All right, all right. Look, okay. So, <laughs> I would admit that not every time that I play and we lose, that it's my team fault. All right. Hmm. I would admit that sometimes I have a I have an off game. I'm human. I've I've I may uh, install lock with Omega and then miss every single shot, and then <laughs> you know, we lose the game. Of course. But I still think overall, I'm a better player than the rest of those plat chat uh, plebs. Okay, so so let's break it down. Well, what do you think makes you better? You know my uh, my aim and stuff. When uh, I think it's like honestly, it might be you know you have those games when you just like pop off when yeah. you hit every single shot and when you just like you can't miss and you like you just like you're in their heads you know yeah, what it's they're like you're in do. the zone yeah i think be, like when i have some of those games it makes me feel like yeah i'm i'm, I'm better than this i'm i'm <laughs> i'm better than all these guys they they don't they don't belong in my server you know so then uh you know this this is just you know being playing devil's advocate kind of thing um how about, uh, you know, when you're popping off and, you know, you're doing all of the, the great, you know, stuff on the team, you got, you know, the highest damage and depending on what game you're playing. So let, like, let's use Overwatch as an example. You got all the gold medals. You're not even healer and you have gold healing. You know, <laughs> like let's say you're playing over, uh, Roadhog. I remember that was back in the days. Roadhog would sometimes have five gold medals, which used to just be ridiculous. But... um. What, what maybe it's just one of the games that you know they're not popping off on you know you know how you were just saying you had a game and you know I was missing every shot but you know like maybe that's just one of the games that they're having right now at that time so like I don't know what what did I do something to you why are you <laughs> <laughs> I mean you know I, I think uh, we as as humans have to have to recognize our our averageness. Okay, like, I know I'm a plot player. I know I'm a plot player. But occasionally, I'm not a plot player. And that makes me feel good. But you're gonna, but you're trying to take take that away from me. Ah. But I think what it is, honestly, is that uh, it's hard to, when you have those games, like those games where you just pop off, you're hitting every shot, your your game stands on all. You're not even dying because they they can't even get close to you. I think right. on the, when you have those games, it in f- that's that's when you're playing at like your skill ceiling. That's when you're playing at your best. Right. And so I guess it's a case of um, may, maybe for for a lot of the time. So like you know, you're in plat chat and you feel like okay. You know, I'm I'm a I'm a, I'm a solid plat player, but I can be more. But it's a case of 
it's only every so often you hit your your true skill ceiling where you're playing at a at like a diamond level rather than a plat level. Yeah. But I guess maybe it's a case of on average your games are not like how to say at average you are not playing at that diamond level of gameplay because that only happens every so often i mean there is a big thing that i i hear pros talk about like you know being on you know getting in the zone and just being on and for some reason they can like sustain it they can sustain it for a while i, I don't know how but they do it's it's like one of those cases where your game sense goes out the roof and your instincts are just you know yeah it's, it's crazy yeah i've been i've been there like i'm sure you've you've had games like that where it's just like you're just you're playing like on on you know you're not playing on autopilot because i mean you're thinking about things but it's not it comes easy it's just easy yeah yeah and what I it's think like it's is... a removal of a barrier of like yeah. your your limit where you start to go into like limit breaker mode. <laughs> and I think what happens is that I don't remember the games where I don't do anything on Widowmaker for like five straight minutes and my team loses. I only remember the games where I pop off you. Yeah. Mm. That's 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 my truth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth I choose to believe. And right. I think like maybe a lot of players um, believe that truth as well because I mean not everyone in your game like they they're the same rank as you right so not right. everyone in your game is bad that's not possible I mean unless the unless the algorithm for the game is like truly awful but, absolutely horrible but but yeah I mean like in in most games it's fine like you get you get matched with players around your skill level maybe some of them have an off game just like you have off games. Right. I, I think like even though I may play at a level that like maybe a rank higher or two rank maybe even two ranks higher sometimes. I can't do it all the time. Right. But in my head I feel like I can. Like I feel like I'm that player all the time, but I'm and I'm not. And I yeah. think that's why a lot of a lot of gamers feel like that. That they feel like yeah, they're I think, their best self all mm-hmm. the time, but they're really not. I, I was just about to say, I think it's a case of, uh, as as a gamer, you know, a lot of us, you know, who play games diligently, um, we have like a, a gamer pride, right? So when we do hit our peak skill level, oftentimes we're like, yeah, you know, that that's how I play on average. You know, like we, we like to kind of stretch it out yeah. where it's like, yeah, that's that's me. That's that's just how I play. When in reality, that was like a blip. It was like a <laughs> that's an outline. <laughs> yeah, it was like a, if if you have like a graph, it's that you know most of your values are hitting like twenty, and then you have that one outlier that like that's at like fifty, and then you know most of the times scientists just exclude that 50 <laughs> they're like that's way too that's not average at all for this person so we're just going to stick with the 20s but oftentimes as gamers because of our our pride you know yeah we, yeah, we yeah. see that 50 and we're like yeah you know that's me because <laughs> yeah, I, I do that too point. that's a good point yeah because I, I uh like when you ask someone like what their rank is they always tell you their top rank they don't tell true, you. True, very uh, true. They don't like they can be like like currently. I'm um I think I'm like just out of flat. I might be go- like, yeah. I well, actually I haven't done placements yet for the new season mm-hmm. of Overwatch, but in Apex, right? Like I'm just inside gold, and but for the most of my place, I'm in Apex. I've been silver. Right? Facts, big facts. <laughs> So like that's my that's my peak. So am I? So if, but if somebody asks me what rank am I, I'm gonna say I'm gold. I'm not yeah, gonna say I'm. <laughs> I still remember when um, gosh, when Overwatch added um decay because I I don't think the first season had decay. I think it's only like the the second season of ranked and after, uh, they had decay. And my whole goal was to I was again I'm I'm in plat chat too. 
you know, back back in the days. I, I might not even be plat anymore, especially since I'm playing on on PC now. Um, but I was generally a higher level plat player, and then I would go on those streaks where I would break into diamond, and I think I broke into diamond just just one game where I had in diamond I got absolutely washed, but um. That that stayed on my profile as my highest rank, and I was just like, "I'm done. That's it. <laughs> I'm a diamond player. It says it right there in my profile. I might not have the badge right now, but I hit that. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> so I definitely think we oftentimes judge ourselves on our best rather than our average. Where I, I think that's also where pro players differ. Pro players worst is probably our best. Uh, uh, that's that's a big compliment on yourself. I don't think I can take <laughs> I'm a, like I'm just being honest. You you be real generous here. Like a Yo. pro player at their worst, nah, man. Nah, I don't think I can take at their ooh. I guess I guess the thing is there they have a a lot tighter of a fluctuation. So like how how I was saying earlier, you know, we might be in the twenties um, for like skill level if we're measuring, and we might hit that fifty occasionally. Pro players are probably playing on average at 70 and but their fluctuation between their highs and their lows are very it's very small. So their average might let's just say set be 70 and then they might dip to 65 and they might peak at 75 80. It's not like a whole jump above, you know what I mean? Yeah. Their outliers might be a lot closer to their baseline than hours so to say remember their their practice you know they 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 played this game like well whatever game they play they they will play it for like 12 hours a day Mm -hmm. so like they that game like comes like second nature to them yeah yeah it's crazy i mean honestly it's just it's just insane to me that you know gaming is a career you know it's one of those things where it's like eh, if i if i really like I, i really sometimes question myself if quote unquote average people like ourselves, you know, picked up gaming from young and and stuck with it on a constant basis, would we be able to hit that level? Or is it really a case of they're just built slightly different, where their reflexes are just a bit above average that allows them to they're they're processing, you know? I, I think it's a bit of both. I think because what uh, basically what you're saying is um can practice get you to pro? Or is it just or does talent, like natural talent, give you that much of an advantage to be pro? Right. I think. All right. There's a there's a player in, on a on an Overwatch League team right now. Uh, EQO. He used to be brown, and he got to pro. Hmm. So he's kind of like one of those examples where you can say, well, uh, I think maybe if you practice, then you could probably get get there. But he played on subpar hardware when he was bronze. He was barely getting 30 FPS right. on his system. So, like, I can't see how much his system was hampering him, was holding him back from getting to that top level. Right, right. So, I mean, but then I guess a lot of people can, a lot of people can argue that as well, right? You know, the hardware is limiting me hardware is a factor though i would say that like speaking personally from someone who had really really crap hardware to like as soon as i get got better hardware i i climbed i got i got better right right so and you started fun. with uh you started with dirty bomb right yeah that that was like one of the few games that i could uh that i could run and i'm kind of like why would you bring that up now <laughs> hey man you know I'm, you gotta I'm, let the people know your 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 origin story yeah but you know i'm grieving the super <laughs> of dirty bomb is going to die next month it's unfortunate it's all coming to and well uh when did that game first come out actually i I remember i played it very briefly i didn't really know much about it other than it was cool bro that game i believe that game first came out 2015 and oh wow! It it was in beta, for I like I'm I'm not even kidding. It was in beta for about two to three years. That's what basically killed the game. Right. 
they didn't release it until either earlier this year or like last year. Ah. Uh, and by then, I guess they're just the player base either kind of left already and moved on to different things. And yeah, there was no like they released the game and like I think the peak uh, amount of players five thousand or something. Ah. Uh. Gotcha. Compared to the peak when it was first announced, which was like 30,000, the game, like, the developers of that game, I think they were the only developers that could make a game like that. Mm-hmm. Because the game has, like, to this day, is one of the best feeling games. Uh, the developer, it was developed by uh, Splash Damage, and they've made, uh, like, a lot of, a lot of classic FPS games, like, uh, uh, what? Oh god. I just said it's a classic game and I can't remember the name. <laughs> so, uh Enemy Territory. It's not that classic. Enemy Territory. Enemy... Yeah. I've actually never heard of that. Oh well, it was it might have been before our time, yeah. <laughs> because it was like it, it came out in like uh two thousand or something. It oh, was that like was, yeah. Huh. That was six. Like one of the <laughs> one of their new newer games that they developed was Gears Five. Oh, okay. That yeah. that's that's a massive title. That's a massive title. Yeah. So like they they made this game that had the weapons in this game just felt good to use. Like I've never used a weapon in any other game that felt as good as that. And the movement was it's just so good. Like the like the gameplay, you can't fault them on the gameplay. Everything else, like how, like literally how everything else is handled in the game, is awful, mm. awful. But the gameplay, I wish that they had someone else dealing with everything else, and they just, like I, I think the best thing that they can do for that game is give it to someone who could uh, market it and improve on everything else. Improve it, right? Like a kind of like a parent company picks it up. And yeah. they say, all right, we, we have the development team and we have we have the resources to make this game. I think the problem with that, too, is uh, it also requires vision. You know, you have to you have to get somebody who truly believes in the game from a visionary standpoint. You know, they're like, all right, I could see this game being something big. Yeah. But I feel like there's very. I don't know, like it seems like nowadays with the climate of gaming and so on, a lot of people or a lot of companies are just eh, we'll. We'll develop our own game and we'll let everybody else flop. You know, we're not picking up anybody else's crumbs anymore. I think like a lot of those games that are like made by like these smaller developers, mm-hmm. you have to kind of get like a, a huge following at first. Then. So like like a like a really because it's it's not like an indie game or anything like that. It's just right. It is, but it is a smaller developer. So I feel like you need to have some kind of gimmick or like some kind of pull to get people playing and like to get a consistent uh, player player base. Right, right. I agree. I mean, and speaking a little bit about developers, um, this is fairly new situation that we don't have very much details on. But uh, Steam, mm, big. You know, we were talking about them earlier with all a lot of the Black Friday deals and stuff going on, and they just removed. Uh, out of their 30,000, I believe, game catalog, they just removed 1,000 games Oof. for uh, for breaking some, for, for I think, uh, using tools incorrectly or, or breaking the rules with tools or something like that, uh, that they provide. The exact quote was, uh, let me just find the exact quote. Uh, yeah, I mean, 1,000 games is, I mean, a, that's a, that's a, that's a chunk. You know that's that's big. That's yeah, uh, that's, that's sizable. That's a lot of. Games. I know that a lot of indie developers got hit, but uh, you know there there are some notable developers. I believe there was one um, development company that essentially lost uh, their entire all of the games that they posted on Steam, which I believe was forty eight. Um, I don't remember the name of the developer off the top of my head, but their entire game set was pulled. Which is that's uh, yeah, that that must hurt. That's, that's rough, a big yeah. hit. Yeah, that is that is rough. Uh, they 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 told the developers that we are removing all associated associated games from sale and revoking your access to the Steamworks backend. We are not interested in distributing any of your games 
on Steam in the future. They told one of the, the developers that they uh that they whose game they removed that. That was a quote that they gave to them. Mm. Wow. For abusing Steam tools. I don't know what's to I don't think they specified what tools or how no, they, they abuse uh, them. That's that's and that's the thing, right? This this is a fairly new situation. I believe uh this was announced either yesterday or the day before yesterday. And we don't really have much details. We just know that the games are gone. Um, I the the weird thing is, I'm surprised that they didn't give more of a explanation as to why. Just because, I uh, you you would think that they would use this as kind of an example, you know, like hey, don't abuse our tools like this. But I'm I'm just very curious as to what tools it was. Yeah, I mean, cause... I don't know if they. They could be just not saying what tools it tools it was to prevent people from abusing the tools. <laughs> yeah, it's a double-edged sword, right? Because <laughs> yeah, like, if you let people know what tools they were abusing, people would be like, oh, wait, you could abuse those? <laughs> but at the same time, I feel like it's one of those things where it's like, uh, all right, we just banned a thousand games. Like, yeah, we're pretty sure that that's, you know, that says, don't abuse these tools. Yeah, true. So... Oh. Yeah, Steam Steam's uh, kind of putting down the hammer. Cracking down. Yeah, and on the reason something. why it's also so <laughs> big is just because uh this is this is around the time of year when a lot of developers get a lot of sales. Yeah. You know, this is when they they make a decent amount of uh a decent amount of money off of uh games that they've made. So, yeah, hmm. this, is, <clears throat> this is the time of year that a lot of people get new hardware and new games to run on that hardware exactly yeah a lot of a lot of new hardware being released though like uh i see nvidia released their new 1650 super gpu which is an interesting product and if you've never like if you haven't heard of it i can't blame you because they did not market this (laughs) i mean i feel like it's gosh nvidia nvidia is weird with how they release things where like so 1650 super where where does this fit in now in in the graphics cards lineup well it's okay so the speculated price is 160 dollars i say speculated Mm. because i haven't been able to find it anywhere and i don't think it's because it's jumping out of shelves it's just that i'm not seeing it anywhere but it's supposed to be $160. $160. And it lies... Now, $160 is a weird price because the 1650, the normal 1650 is $150, but the 1650 hmm. Super is like significantly better than it because it's it's got more CUDA cores and more on a higher clock and faster memory, which all translates to being significantly better. So it's close to like right. a 1660 in performance, which is oh. a, which is a card that costs about sixty dollars more. So I guess yeah. the 1660 is kind of pointless, especially since the 1660 Super just came out. Uh, was it a last month or maybe like a few weeks? Yeah, ago? last month. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it's it's weird because it seems like they're cannibalizing their average line. Like, they're cannibalizing their non-Super or non-TI lines. Yeah. I, I, I'm I not sure why this card exists. Again, like, I wasn't sure why the 1660 Super existed rather than just lower the price of the 1660 60 TI. Because the 1660 Super is basically a little crappier. 1660 Ti. So why not just lower the price of the 1660 Ti? And same with this. Right. This is like a little crappier 1660. Why not just lower the price instead of having uh five products in the price range of 150 to 280 dollars? That's 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 yeah. not that's like 130 dollars range to have five products in. Yeah, that's uh. I, and the thing is, again, with computer components in general. Chances are, you know, people, most people plan out their builds pretty well. So they can plan for that $130 range in, you know, in their, in their build. So I, 
I don't know. I it's just kind of weird how they have this wide set of range for of um of performance when some of them are performing at a like at a similar level as to something that's technically below it or above it. It's it's strange i just i don't understand why like where does it fit in and i feel like they might just have people in the lab who's like hey we made this and it 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 works what do you want to do with it and they're like oh uh slap a sticker on it and sell it yeah why not right <laughs> what i don't understand is maybe maybe it's because why don't they pull current products and update it you know what i mean like at, well maybe not pull it but wait for them to sell out and sell it more as in okay like we're not we're no longer selling the regular 1660 you know this or this is replacing the regular 1660 or something you know like they just keep adding products rather than updating or refreshing i have i have no idea i maybe it has something to do with uh the new radeon cards that's coming out next year uh the well i think it's already out the rx 5500 and the rx 5600 i think uh, that's supposed to be well. Right now, those cards are only in like uh, pre-built systems. So like HP, ASUS uh, pre-built desktops, you can get those cards in them. But they're not available for sale to the to the public. Uh, they should be available from like next year. So we don't have pricing, but it's speculated based on the performance that it should be around the 150, 160 price range. So Maybe this is a move to counter those cards, <clears throat> but even still, like you said, why? If you, if you're going to have a card like that's basically the 1660, why not pull the 1660 or just don't make that card at all and just drop the price of the 1660? Exactly. I mean, hmm. Because I, I really do think that uh, AMD uh, is putting pressure on Nvidia with that rx9 because it seems like they're stressing about something <laughs> yeah and Which they're is... just not making they're just not making smart choices i don't i don't understand like because nvidia is still the gpu king like on the, on the high end there's nothing emd has done like right. there's they can't compete on the high end well, not yet, at least. I mean, on on the CPU side, they they're crushing it. They are absolutely. I I got I got an AMD CPU, it. you know. So, did you see that new uh uh the new Threadripper processors? Yes, yes, I did. Yo, those are insane. They are the actually that reminds me. I I only I only saw this just before we started streaming, so I didn't get to look into it too much. Did uh. <laughs> Did Intel release another i9? <laughs> yeah. They oh <laughs> boy. Like listen listen to listen to what Intel pulled, right? Intel, you know these like the reviewers, they have yeah. well they have an embargo on on the product. They get the product, they have to like uh they get to get some time to test it or whatever, but they mm -hmm. can't give out any information. When the embargo list, that's when all the reviews, that's why like all like if you're a tech guy and or or girl, and you yeah, are, we, we we inclusive out here <laughs> equality, and and you follow a lot of these channels on YouTube, like you will see all of the reviews go out at the same time. That's because that's when the embargo lifted, right? So Intel released their competitor to the the new AMD chip, chips, the 3970X and the 3960X. Which is the i9 10 10 980. 10 oh my, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> and they just didn't they just release the what was it the 9900KS? Yeah, uh, but that's that's a different that's a different range, right? This is high end desktop. Right. So that's like uh, the 9900KS is mainstream. This is okay. more for like uh, productivity, video editing, like heavy video editing stuff, right? Mm-hmm. But what they did is they released their chip on the same day that AMD is releasing the new chips, but six hours earlier. Ah. Now you may think to yourself, right? Why? Why would they do that? 
why why would they do that right now that's because the embargo for Treadripper is later so that means if you want to review the 10980X you can't compare it oh. against Treadripper so that means out the gate there are going to be people who see this and they're like ah okay um this is the newest, latest, and greatest. Uh, let me pick it up before. So they're essentially trying to just jump ahead and be like, "Hey, get this," you know? Yeah, we, we have this. There's first. reviews out there, and uh, it's out there in the world. Just, just go get it. Yeah. And they're trying to just get the jump on AMD. I mean, I it's sold out already. <laughs> is it's it out of stock. really? It's out of stock. Oh my God, that so, is that is stupid. It's the official is uh it's Intel uh, Core i9 10980XE Cascade Lake Horrible 18 man. core 3 gigahertz LGA 2066 uh 165 watt I'm not going to read that long BX8 zeros and we're not going through all that no, no. sells it's a desktop processor and like you said and it sells at do you know the price point Yeah it's $1000 1050 <laughs> Okay Bro, that is that's hefty. But well, that's that's actually cheap because okay, well these aren't these aren't mainstream processors. These are not mainstream. These are for these are for, serious me. These are monster machines that are mean. These bro. are basically for people that have a specific task. That right. They're basically they're basically mainstream users that have a specific task that the mainstream processors can't do. can't handle. Yeah. So. These processors, like, you know what's the, you know what else is the crappy thing about this processor? Hmm. This is the same processor from two years ago. They released the seventy nine eighty XE, which is a re- and this processor is a refresh of that, which is actually a refresh of the processor they made last year, which was the ninety nine eighty XE. Now the seventy nine eighty XE and the ninety nine eighty XE, they were both two thousand dollars. Oh wow! And this is the same processor, so why were they two thousand dollars? Jeez, I mean maybe at the time, I I don't know. It's because they it's... didn't have competition because Treadripper, uh, Treadripper wasn't didn't... out. Yeah, they, well they was out, but it wasn't as good as this. No. Nope. Yeah, they they weren't able to compete just yet. These Treadripper processors, yo, they are oof. They okay. Let me just, let me just talk about the specs on these. The thirty nine seventy X. This is a this is a desktop processor. This is not what you're gonna put in a server. A desktop processor that has thirty two cores and sixty four threads. And then there's the thirty nine sixty X with twenty four cores, forty eight threads. And these things are they're like usually with these. High core count, high thread count processors. They're like, they have lower like a uh, frequency clocks because right. it's just because something technical. I'm not smart enough. All right, but, <laughs> but they usually have lower frequency. These are clocks at 3.7 to 4.5 gigahertz. That's decent clocks. Yeah. Uh, all the reviews are saying that this is the best desktop processor ever. Wow. Yeah, and then, but and they're demanding the price for it because the thirty nine sixty X's are fourteen hundred dollars, and then the thirty nine seventy X is two thousand dollars. Right. Yeah. So it's it's not cheap. So if it's you want, the, yeah, that's a huge. Yeah. If you want the best of the best, you gotta pay for the best of the best. Oh man, that's uh, I mean, so do you know when the embargo is supposed to lift for AMD? The it, will, it already lifted. It really uh, did? Okay. Uh, I lifted the embargo lifted on uh so yes, I was I was like the uh, the embargo lifted at the twenty fifth, I believe. At mm-hmm. um at eight AM or something. And then Intel embargo lifted on the twenty fifth at one AM. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. They're really trying to trying to <laughs> I don't know. It seems like Intel is scared, and that says something to me. And they don't even have the the sc- now the scary thing about this is that they don't have a response for this, which is 
as much as I, I despise Intel for what they did with like the price conversion when they were they, when they were top, any mm-hmm. company is gonna do that. And yeah, Nvidia is doing that right common. now. Yeah. Nvidia is doing that right now with their high end GPUs. And if AMD gets the chance, they're going to do it as well. Right. So we need competition. And the AMD, competition and... makes things better for the consumer. Period. Yep. And Intel has already said that they don't. They'll need to uh, shrink their process processing. Right now they're on 14 nanometer. They'll need to shrink to 7 nanometer. And they say that's not going to happen until like 2021, 2022. So that's a lot of years of AMD dominance. Right. Which is not good for the for the consumer. We need competition. Yeah. Um, and it's really just Intel and AMD being the two giants that are competing in this field for processors right now. Yeah. So, we might be expecting a, what, do you think a spike in prices coming up soon? I think on, like, uh, on the desktop side, on like well, on the mainstream desktop side, uh, I won't expect a, a hike in price, simply because Intel still has the fastest gaming processor. You know, right. they, they can still compete in that regard, but for people like, let's say, creators who edit 4K videos... And would would be really interested in something like this. They they're gonna have to they're gonna have to pay a premium for it. For it, right, right. They're definitely not getting any any Black Friday deals on it. Because <laughs> nah. why 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 would they? They don't need to. Yeah, yeah. But on on the other hand, they, since Ryzen is so good, like, uh, did you see the the Ryzen nine city nine fifty X? No, did I? Yeah, it, that released uh, a bit earlier for seven fifty or six fifty. That is seven fifty, and that's people are calling that like a mini Threadripper, like a budget tre- Threadripper, because oh, it gives okay. you really good performance. Right. So you can be that price point too. Yeah, it's cheaper than the ten nine eighty XE. Oh my god. Oh my the names, God. man. <laughs> they, they, the names. I think, I think PC companies in general, Nvidia, Intel. You guys need to start. Yo, your marketing team has some work to do, bro. <laughs> yo, I, just, I got exhausted mid, mid name, yo. I was <laughs> like, yo, ten nine eighty X. Yeah, okay, it's cheaper than that, and it gives you better performance in a lot of tasks. Right. So. So there's still some competition going on yeah. there for now, but no, now is still a really good time to be a PC enthusiast. Right. Well, I mean, we'll see what the future holds. Uh, one thing I can say is it's gonna be interesting. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that I built my PC when I did, and I'm glad that it's running well. Gosh, I have to knock on wood, I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> oh, that was a bold thing to say, bro. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> You know, it's funny. I still remember when I um when I was building it, um, and I put the CPU into the socket, and I had trouble installing the liquid cooling, um, getting it to like latch on because you know it's different than um how Intel locks on. It has these like latches that you have to uh, you know, yeah. like hook onto one side and then screw it down. And mm-hmm. It it was. It was actually quite difficult, especially with the 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 actual cooling. I don't want to call it a cable, but the cooling um, tube yeah. going to the uh, radiator. Those things are so stiff that, like, when you're trying to like angle it, it's just not. It's fighting against you. So I I, I just struggled hardcore. So you know my my thermal pace might be a little bit messy, but you know <laughs> it's on right. It's it's on. It's, it's running. On, it's hey. been running for a it while, does. and temps are good. <laughs> it doesn't look like the footage is. Uh, to... Oh God, <laughs> the, the <laughs> blasphemy! Gosh. Yeah. Um. So in the last week too, we also had um, in the electric sector, we had some interesting developments as well. Um, <laughs> are you talking about the Cybertruck? The cyber truck. <laughs> the cyber truck. Um, all right. So, first of all, Elon has gotten two hundred fifty thousand 
orders of it already. <laughs> Just confusing to me. That is confusing to me. Yo. So, all right. So here's here's the thing, right? I've been hearing a lot of the big tech YouTubers. Um, you know, we're talking about the MKBHDs of the world. Um, initially, MKBHD was just like, I, you know, I don't need a pickup truck. I've never needed a pickup truck. I'm not getting it. And then he gave in because they made a matte black version. <laughs> <laughs> he specifically said not because he said a matte black not because of that, but we all know it's because yeah, of that. Okay, yeah, it's because of that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we all know. And you know, it's funny. Like the more I look at it. It's kind of getting, no. you know. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of growing on me, man. You know, like it has that aggressive, angular look that I, I also, you know, I like in my Lamborghinis. That so, aggressive, uh, angular look. Okay. <laughs> it's just way off the ground. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I, the thing is, I want to see one on the road, and I know it's gonna be a long because this thing is huge and um ford also you know they on on stage when elon was presenting it uh they did that whole tug of war where they had a ford f-150 which is and it has been the best-selling pickup truck in america for a while now um and the cyber truck the mid-range um cyber truck pulled it you know pretty easily so i guess before i jump any further there are three variants of the Cybertruck. We have the, is it the sing, uh, it's a single motor, then the dual motor, and then the tri-motor. Um, very, I think like 9% of the the pre-orders were for the for the lowest one, which starts at about 39,000. Um, and then 47% were for the uh, dual motor variant, and then the tri-motor variant, which is gonna be released, I think late 2021, um, had 41% of pre-orders, which is it's ridiculous because that one's like 60 grand. Um, but people, truck. for a pickup truck. And I mean, it's on, on it's in an interesting truck. place. Oh, sorry. On pickup trucks, traditionally cheaper. Than... So they are actually in a decent range being able to compete against Ford. They're actually not too far off against the F-150. And then like, higher end f-150s um so they're actually just around the same price on average so it really is a question of you know people who are true pickup truck people are going to have to really sit back and consider but i think people are going to stick with the familiar yeah i don't think so because pickup truck drivers they're going to keep buying pickup the pickup truck that they've been buying like it's hard enough for for like a Ford drive, like a Ford F one fifty driver. Was was the uh, Chevy? It's the Silverado or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Those shots look identical, and it's and it's hard to convince a Ford Ford driver to switch over to a Silverado. Yeah. So like, and, but you know the interesting thing. Um, so like I was saying on stage, you know they had that um that video of the Cybertruck pulling the F-150, and that was the mid-range Cybertruck doing that um, without the tri-motor plaid system and all of that. Um, and Ford, uh, one of the one of the Ford, some executive at Ford challenged Elon, Cybertruck. He was like, you guys, that wasn't even fair. You guys had it in, in two-wheel drive, you know, in the rear-wheel drive. No, was it rear-wheel? I think it was rear-wheel. Uh, the Cybertruck has... It's heavier. It has more weight on the back, whereas like the F one fifty that was in the video had no weight in the back, so it had no grip. So it was obvious that it would win. And um, he was like, you know, hey, Elon, send us a Cybertruck, and we'll do a real, you know, <laughs> test. Oh, and of yeah. course, Elon, being the Twitter fiend that he is, said, okay. <laughs> sure <laughs> we'll live stream it too and um i think the next day uh a ford spokesperson went to uh 
Insiders EV and kind of retracted the statement. <laughs> oh my god. He said something like, um it, it was just banter kind of thing. Um <laughs> so oh, yeah. it was just a prank, bro. It was just a prank, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so I I don't know, that says something, you know. I, Ford's I you would think Ford would go straight at it, but I guess uh Ford is not indulging in the pissing contest. So I don't know. I mean, uh, funny enough, one of my coworkers, um, he he's thinking about it. <laughs> he's thinking about it. He's like, you know, he already has a Model Three, and he's like, mm. at first, I, I I was I was on the fence, but now, oh, God. thinking about it, that's not like I see a lot of people are uh, bash, are like defending the truck, be like, you know, they had to do something different to stand out. I'm like, yeah, sure they did, but they didn't have to make an ugly vehicle. So because... here's here's the thing, right? Because of the material that they use, they use a, a cold rolled steel, which is once it's thicker than your average flimsy car panels, mm-hmm. um, which makes it way harder to work with and form into anything that's not like a flat panel. Well, then no one um, it. So yeah, that's that's the whole thing. Right now I so I think their whole thing, you know, they they started off saying pickup trucks have been looking the same forever, which is a Gosh. fairly true statement, you know? Um but I I don't know. It's it's so different than convention that I just don't know if it's going to pick up. But one can say the same thing about electric cars as a whole. But I think the thing about electric cars is at least they still look like cars. Maybe I'm missing something, all right? Let's say, you know you, you know what's a Mazda Miata? <laughs> yes. All right. So let's say a Mazda Miata, all right? That's a convertible. Mm-hmm. Right? That's a convertible vehicle. Now let's say a uh, Lamborghini Gallardo Spider. That's a convertible, mm-hmm. right? Right. Those cars don't look alike. Not at all. Is the Gallardo a good-looking car? To me, yeah. And that's the thing. You can make a different vehicle, but you could still make it look good. It could be different and also look good. I don't know what people... A lot of people are saying, yeah, whoa, well, it's different. Yeah, but it's ugly. <laughs> it's yeah, I mean, no... Ugly. No one can deny. I've I, like I've seen very, very like this is probably one of the most polarizing vehicles I've seen ever. It's it's literally you either love it or you absolutely hate it. There is like no on the fence where it's like eh, it's it's okay. It's so polarizing. I actually I I said you know there's very few people on the fence. I'm kind of on the fence though because <laughs> okay. like. It's, it's kind of like one of those things, you know, looking from the waist up kind of looks good. <laughs> you know, once once you start to see it as a whole, it's kind of like, mm, I, mm. you know, I've, I've seen a lot of people who were at the actual event, um, their expressions when they saw it. And a lot of it kind of just went from, what? You know, to, mm, oh, okay, to... <laughs> Okay. To <laughs> oh, I I mean sure, yeah, I'll I'll buy one. <laughs> and it's the weirdest thing because if you actually look at people's expressions, a lot of them kind of just looked at it like, "What? Uh, when you bringing out the real one, bro?" Because <laughs> that's not it. Is that? Like, oh, this is a prank, right? This is yeah. oh, he got us. Elon got us. That old jokester. He's gonna. But the thing one. is, it can still there. There's still a lot of changes that could happen to it because. Um, it currently doesn't even have uh side mirrors, by the way. Um, I wonder if that's in the plans or if it's just some. I mean, I think technology. so. They're trying to think, do the same thing with the Roadster. The Roadster doesn't have side mirrors; it has uh cameras. Yeah. Um, for for speed. Um, but I I don't know. I, I don't know if it's gonna fly with um what is it FTA or I, I don't I I forgot the, the, road the governing guys. 
Yeah, those those people. Yeah, the people who say whether your car is is safe on the roads or not. I I don't know. I mean, and it's also one of those things where cars, you know, and trucks have traditionally been designed to have crumple zones for, you know, dissipating energy anytime you get into an accident. Yeah, this this thing's not going to crumple. This thing is going to hit a tree and break the tree. It's just not meant to crumple like that steel is not meant to crumple. (laughs) And I don't know how that's going to work if you hit somebody. Because I think if you hit somebody with this, obviously, like, if you hit somebody with a regular car, it's still pretty rough. Like, nobody ever wants to be hit with a car and be like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm okay, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but um, if you hit somebody with this, I think it's going to cause oh, it's immediate over. internal bleeding. <laughs> it's over. It's over. You get hit, so, you get hit by a cyber truck. Oh. And Dude. the thing is, these things... They're quick. They are quicker than I think the top end model, the zero to sixty and two point nine. No truck should be doing zero to sixty in that in that amount of time. I think sports cars struggle to do that. Stock sports cars struggle to do that. Yeah. So, um, imagine if <laughs> if somebody you know throws their thing into you know into plaid mode and hits that, and all of a sudden a pedestrian pops out. Mm. Well, <laughs> it's time to meet your maker. He'd be like. Oh. Did you feel that bump? I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Did you see that? No. Let's just keep keep going straight onwards. But I don't know. I mean, if there's anybody who could sell this thing, it's Elon and it's Tesla. I mean, I, I do think Tesla has a ravenous fan base um, that will basically support anything that Elon does. So, but the question is, will it compete? And once it's out there in the wild and I see this thing next to me, chances are I'm not going to want to be near it because this thing looks terrifying. <laughs> I don't think I'd want to drive next to that. It looks huge too. Looks really oh yeah, huge. it is. Um, I saw a picture of um, someone who has a six foot um, wingspan, you know, sticking out their arm all the way from the left to the right. And it's barely... Uh, it barely finishes, like, cover the bed of the truck. So if you are standing with your left arm literally touching the tail light, your right arm is barely reaching the end of the bed if you are if you have a six-foot uh, span. Oof. So, yeah, it's massive. Uh, I think the bed of it is six and a half feet long. So... That is, uh, and and its capabilities, its towing capacity, and all of that. It's a, uh, it's definitely a powerful truck. Like, if you are looking for a truck with top of the line specs, this is it. Oh, and you want to hear something really cool, actually? Because I I spoke to my coworker about it when it first got released. Um, the I forgot what it's called, but the thing that covers the truck, the bed of the truck, um, that uh like metal sheet that can like retract uh that can also be made into solar panels yeah i heard that to get, give you some extra charge or like if yeah on, on, and on it could give you an extra 15 miles a day so that could be clutch that's i mean that's very clutch i mean think about it you out there camping you know you uh you just just kind of chill you you out there camping you sit in the bed of the truck or whatever, you, or you lay down in the bed of the truck, you have the solar panels over it, you're in the shade. This might be the ultimate off-roading vehicle. I mean, I know that the clearance height is, uh, for most vehicles, I think it was uh, uh, 13 in, like No, it's like 12 inches, but it can be like lifted to 14. I think like uh, the clearance height for this vehicle is 16 inches, which is it's way above even like vehicles that had aftermarket kits added to them to boost the, the clearance height from the ground so i don't know as as a truck it is definitely a truck you know it is definitely capable but the the aesthetics of it are just so polarizing but no, all in po- due time it's not polarizing it's ugly <laughs> man you are not letting this this, <laughs> this truck live it down it's just like your designers could do better your designers could do better, Tesla. Like, I'm not a designer, so I'm not going to sit here and say, I can do better. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> but but they they have the resources to a team of professionals should should have done better than that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's definitely one of those things where we'll see if they do make any modifications to it afterwards. But I hope they do. This is this will be Tesla's last um, major announcement for a while. A lot of it is going to be mostly software announcement, but um, they've basically they've basically completed their lineup. They have they have their high end Model S. They have their high end SUV, the Model X. Then they have the lower end Model Three and the Model Y coming out soon. That's their lower end SUV. Then they have their um their 18 wheeler truck thing they have an atv and they have this um cyber truck so now we gotta wait for that tesla motorbike oh uh that's one thing elon said that tesla is not doing oh. he said it's, it's it's safety wise he does not um he would not do a motorcycle but I don't know. I mean, you never know. Sometimes people say one thing, and then all of a sudden next year, it's like, "Hey guys, so we we have a we have a surprise for you." <laughs> so maybe it's just because he can't be first to make an electric um, motorbike. Because like I think Fisker has that market pretty locked. Up. There, yeah. So there are some really good electric motorcycles out there right now. There, and they're actually pretty pretty competitive. Um like in terms of against regular motorcycles. But I think Elon is, I think the whole thing with Elon is um, autopilot. And I don't think you can put autopilot on a motorcycle. <laughs> so, I mean, you can, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. Would it be good? Uh, yeah, that's the question, right? <laughs> you know, I don't know. It's a, that's a risky thing. But, you know, time will tell. Uh, Tesla is, I still rem- remember after, after the announcement, my coworker texted me and he was like, so uh, Tesla stock is going to drop 8% <laughs> tomorrow morning. And then it, and then it did. And then it did. I, I, was, I got to work <laughs> and he looked at me and he was like, 6% already. <laughs> and I was like, no. <laughs> So, but um, yeah, I mean, Tesla's doing things out here. We'll see how it all works out and i still want to see if ford officially backed out or not because i want to see that i want to see that that tug of war but we'll see how it goes do we got anything else we want to cover uh i think i'm uh, i think i'm good all right well well, thanks same for me so well i mean coming down to the end of episode five of gaming ti we are officially on most major uh podcasting platforms so please check us out we are on itunes on google podcast google play we're on soundcloud spotify so yeah just type in gaming ti and we'll pop up so we'll be doing this again every week wednesday episodes will either be dropping wednesday night or thursday so yeah just uh keep an eye out for that and you know thank you guys for listening Again, we're still in our infancy and we still have some some stuff to improve, but I swear it's only up from here. This has been episode five of Gaming TI and we will see you guys next week. And best of luck to your Black Friday and Cyber Monday shopping sprees. Hopefully you guys pick up some uh, good stuff because I'm, I'm about to go on Amazon right oh, now. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was, it's one of those things where it's like I don't even... <laughs> Like, I don't think I need anything, but, you know, just in case. Yeah, you know. (laughs) But hope everybody enjoys their rest of their week and their weekend. And we'll see you guys. We'll talk to you guys next week. All right. Peace.